Ever wonder how Instagram remembers your current photo or how your browser knows which page to display? Today we're revealing the magic behind it all, Java object references. Let's jump right in. So what exactly is an object reference in Java? An object reference contains the location for accessing an object. It holds something like a pointer or an address to the location where an object is stored in memory, but not the object itself. In a previous lesson, we looked at primitive data types. With primitives, the variable we declare holds the contents of the primitive value. For example, when we say int my int equals 25, the Java virtual machine allocates four bytes of memory the size of an int primitive, gives that location a name of my int, and stores the value of 25 there. An object reference variable contains information on how to get to the object it's assigned to, but not the object itself. Let's create an object reference, car, my car equals new car. So what are we doing here? Let's break the statement down into pieces. First, when we write car, my car, we're declaring a variable reference called my car of the class type car. In our coffee cup analogy that we saw in the last lesson, we're saying this cup can hold only references to objects of type car and we're declaring a variable, just like we did when we declared our int variable, int my int. Except the type we specify is car instead of int. Car in this case is a class, which is a blueprint for creating objects of type car. So what's a car class? We'll look at that in just a moment. My car is the object reference that we'll use to access our car object. And when we write new car, the new keyword creates an instance of the car class in computer memory. The object we'll be referencing. The memory location where objects are created is called the heap. And finally, the equal sign assigns the newly created car object to the car reference variable. You can think of this as putting the address of the newly created car object into the my car reference, shown here with the binary numbers being written, indicating they're an address of some kind and a location on the heap. From this point, we can use the MyCar reference to access and manipulate the car object. Let's look at how we can create a car class and use it. Here we are in IntelliJ, our Java IDE. I've already got a main method ready for us to use, so pause the video and create a new project if you need to. Over in our project folder, let's right click on the source folder and select New, Java Class. For the name, let's call it Car. And just like that, IntelliJ creates a car class for us. Let's go back to our main method and type in car my car equals new car. At this point, we've created a new instance of a car object that we can reference with the my car variable, just like we saw on our slide earlier. But we're not limited to creating just one car reference object. Let's create another one. Car the car equals new car. With this statement, we've created another reference called the car that refers to a different car object in our memory heap. I've labeled the objects car object one and car object two to refer to them individually, but there's no difference between the objects other than their location in memory. Should we need to, we can create new car reference variables and assign them to already existing objects like this. Car, some car equals my car. Now both the reference variables SumCar and MyCar refer to the same car object in our diagram car object one In this diagram, we have three references, but only two objects. We may decide that we want to change the objects our variables reference. We can do that by assigning one reference to another like this. The car equals my car. At this point, the car, my car, and some car all refer to the same location, in this case, the object car object 1. Car object 2, previously referenced by the car, now has no references. When this is the case, the object is abandoned and cannot be referenced in our application again. In these situations, the Java Virtual Machine will eventually perform an operation called garbage collection. Garbage collection will free up the memory associated with the objects that are no longer referenced, so our application can reuse the memory for other objects. This operation prevents memory leaks in our code. Right now, my car, the car, and some car all refer to the same object in memory. Let's set some car equal to null. 
This makes some car a null reference, meaning it doesn't point to any object and has no value. In this diagram, I use the ground symbol to indicate the variable reference is null. All references are null by default, unless they refer to an object. Although it's now null, the sum car reference variable can now be assigned to a new car object or to an existing car object as we wish. However, we can't refer to other object types. If we say sum car equals new string, we get an error saying the required type is car, but we provided a string. Similarly, if we try to assign sum car an integer value of 35, we get the same kind of error. Required type is car, but provider type is int. Classes, objects, and object references are a fundamental part of the Java language. We'll expand our knowledge on all of them in the coming lessons. That's all for now. Thanks for watching, and remember to always begin secure.